Hello everyone and welcome to this short webinar on Digital Innovation Hubs. It's a webinar especially for EBN members, organised with the support of uh, GG Connect and two of our members who are very actively engaged in Digital Innovation Hubs initiatives in their country, Zurich in Cyprus and Krakow Technology Park in Poland. Um, just to set the scene, as you will have picked up in the invitation to join this webinar, we're calling it because we see many potential synergies between European digital innovation hubs and EBN members, especially the EU fix. A European digital innovation hub is defined as a single organization or a coordinated group of organizations with complementary expertise with a not-for-profit objective that supports companies, especially SMEs and mid-caps, or the public sector in their digital transformation. Then EU BICS, as we all on this call know, are quality certified business support organizations whose mission is to ensure every entrepreneur can realize their innovative business idea from earliest stage to international expansion. Several EU BICS are already active in the current D digital innovation hubs, and looking to the future, we see a really important role for the BICs to play in supporting and engaging with digital innovation hubs in their regions in terms of the delivery of business support activities. And so this webinar is to present to you how you can get involved in that. We'll begin with the presentation from Anne-Marie Sasson of DG Connect. She'll show you, explain a little bit about how digital innovation hubs are going to be funded nationally and at a European level. Then we will move on to hear the work that Paniotis um, from our member in Cyprus has been doing nationally to prepare Cyprus for European Digital Innovation Hubs initiative under the Digital Europe programme, which will kickstart next year. And finally, we'll hear from um, Bartosz in Krakow Technology Park, whose presentation is entitled to GIH or not to GIH. Um, it will be sharing their lessons that they've learned, their journey to becoming a digital innovation hub, the, um, what they appreciate about it, the challenges they have with it, and um, for other potential GIH actors to, to bear in the back of their mind. Each of the presentations will be just 10 minutes. So bear with the presenters, please, as they quickly go through. And if you have any questions, please post them in the chat and we'll have 10 minutes left for questions and answers at the end. So without any further ado, we'll welcome Anne-Marie Sasson, who's joining us by phone. So Anne-Marie, please, the floor is yours. And Anne-Marie, we see your slides. Anne-Marie and participants, it seems Anne-Marie is having a little bit of difficulty in connecting in. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll jump forward to um, the presentation from Paniotis of Cyprus. Paniotis will make you presenter. And um, we will then go on to Bartos and come back to Anne-Marie's at the end. Thanks a lot, Paniotis. Panayotis, if you can unmute yourself, please. So apologies for the technical troubles at the beginning of this webinar. Paniotis, we need you to activate your microphone. We can see your we can see your slides, but we can't hear you. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Now maybe if you can start again, we can hear you. Thanks a lot. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Panagiotis Filimis, and I'm the CEO of CYRIC, uh, the um, Business Innovation Center of Cyprus. And we are also the coordinators of the Cyprus Digital Innovation Hub, the uh, CD Hub. So I'll go through uh, our story of how we started and how we, at this moment, coordinating the CD Hub. Uh, first of all, um, uh, just set the scene, uh, to say a little bit about our vision as a Cyprus Digital Innovation Hub is to create a one-stop shop to bring the fourth digital revolution in Cyprus by offering cutting-edge digital transformation and technology innovation services, helping both the Cyprus industry and the government in order to ad adopt and benefit from them. Uh, also, uh, one of our vision is to establish the nationwide TIH that will bring together all the necessary critical mass for having a significant impact to the smart specialization sectors and uh, also to become one of the leading DIH in, the, in our region in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, so our story started when there was um, a tender from the European Commission that was won by PwC and Oxendia. They were requesting from the 10 new countries to do a training on DIH. Uh, and uh, going through the definition of the DIH, we realized that as a business innovation center, uh, we have uh, the profile because we provide uh, uh, both business and innovation services to startups, SMEs, entrepreneurs, and corporates, as well as we have also a series of services with regards to our incubator, uh, to startups. So uh, looking at the, at the prof profile and also our positioning in Cyprus being at the center of the ecosystem and knowing all the big stakeholders uh, from around the, the, the industry and the government, um, we applied and we were the winning proposal for, for, for proceeding with the training. And we formed uh, the Digital Innovation Hub uh, at the national level. And as you can see, we have um, from the RTOs, we have SARIC, our own R&D center, and another six RTOs, uh, also some universities. From the investor side, we have the Business Angels of Cyprus and the Promotion Agency of Investment in Cyprus. From the industry, we included the two biggest uh, industry associations, with the Chamber of Commerce and also the Employers Association. Together, they have more than 200 professional associations. That is the R&D Association. It's an association that its members uh, uh, invest in R&D uh, uh, as far as their, their, their revenues. And also have the Association of Startup Cyprus the, and an incubator and co-working space. Uh, the most important from the government came the support from the digital champion, which at that time they were responsible for the digital policy in Cyprus. Um, and at the same time, when, when we won this training, we, we were asked by the commission to include some of the other applicants who failed, and actually some of them are already here. Uh, we also have the HPC, which is the Cyprus Institute, which sits, let's say, uh, as a specialty center supporting the digital innovation hub. Um, so from this uh, business uh, plan we did and analyzing the, what we have in, uh, what is the status in Cyprus, um, we identify the main industry sectors, which is the robotics automation and lean manufacturing, mainly supporting, I would say, uh, the food industry, which supports the, the tourists. We have hundreds of uh, industries. Um, that are willing uh, uh, to, to invest in digital transformation and digital innovation. We have agriculture, tourism, shipping and maritime, health and energy. And as far as the technological sectors, um, there are some basic ones, which is the Internet of Things, um, big data, design and prototyping, robotics, electronics and consumer products, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, um, earth observation, because we have a very big center working on this aspect and, and they provide and downstream services, uh, the HPC and the cybersecurity. Now, as far as the services of the hub, um, as far as the business support services, we have um, a series of services from financial availability assessment, competition analysis, access to funding, uh, assessment of business ideas, and obviously the incubation services, which comes mainly from accelerators and incubators. And of course, some of the technical, uh, let's say, services are coming also from the RTOs. Um, technical support services, we can see like the 3D design, the prototyping, software, robotics, electronics, interactive media, and observation services, which again reflects 
the, um, the, the innovation services that are provided by the main RTOs. Um, also, as far as the commercial services, uh, providing market expansion, access to manufacturing facilities, uh, networking, um, and also network with international business and global markets, and also sales channels for the global markets. So this, this basically are, 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 is a landscape of the main services that the, the, the DIH provides at the moment. Um, I should mention that some of the RTOs are not really providing a lot of service to business, so it's very minimal their contribution. And um, uh, that's why we're moving on uh, in, 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 the, in the training the RTOs. Now, I will give an example of one of the projects we, as a city, as a SARIC, as coordinator, but also as a city hub, uh, we are participating in the Horizon 2020 project. So we are given the opportunity when we applied and uh, registered as a full digital hub in the GRC page of, of, of European Commission. Uh, we were approached by many consortium to participate in, in DIH projects, and one of them was successful. Is the DIH Square, which is uh, basically had the purpose to develop a common open platform reference architecture for larger production, and it's going to be a marketplace of one-stop shop for SMEs. Um, it includes actually two competitive open calls, um, and it's going to be given 20 cross-border technology transfer experiments, uh, 250,000 each. That was the first close, uh, call closed, and they were from Cyprus. Surprisingly, we had one of the highest number of applications. We have five companies and five technology suppliers. Just to give you an example, uh, Belgium had no application either from companies or from suppliers. And we did actually an amazing work with the whole Digital Innovation Hub. So we used basically, we used eight members of the Digital Innovation Hub. And going back to the slide just to show you which were. So we used, uh, first of all, the Chamber of Commerce and the First Association to approach uh, their, their, their members uh, and uh, to see if there is any interest to participate in the DIH call. So they did an absolute fantastic work because they, they were doing also uh, headhunting. So they know usually the Chamber of Commerce, they know specifically who, who are the customers that are really interested to, you know, to, to, to be more innovative and automate their factories. So we have got a great help for them. Uh, and then, of course, we had um, four RTOs that they were involved, that they are involved and they, and they have um, facilities and expertise in, in, in robotics. And of course, our incubator and our R&D center was involved. And also from the members, we had some media companies who are willing to promote uh, our, our uh, uh, call, the uh, DIH Square call in the whole country. Uh, so this is just an example of how uh, a DIH can be active and, and engage the industry, uh, both the industry and also the, the technology suppliers, because in order to come up with a solution, a digital animation solution, in, 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 in a factory which relates to agile manufacturing and production and robotics, um, uh, you need really to disseminate very well. So we use the whole um, uh, DIH uh, members, actually half of the members at that time, eight members out of the 16. Um, and this is a good example of how uh, any DIH can, can engage uh, the whole ecosystem um, and, and do such experiments which are very, uh, in my opinion, are very important because we, if there is any a successful, any successful proposal from this, then we can show it as a success story to the whole industry. Now, as far as uh, how do we go into the future? Um, at the moment, City Hub, is, uh, it used to be a network without a, a legal structure. Uh, so we moved on and we created a non-profit. So we're uh, almost finished with that. Uh, it's going to be an invitation within the next month of some new members to join the City Hub. At the same time, we've started developing our own service quality manual, which we find very important, and it's based a little bit also of, of our experience as a big. And of course, it will follow up with a training to the, all the members of City Hub. We are also at this moment designing a new type of tool, it's like a web tool, where we, in order to innovate also digitally is to allow our members to add or, or remove services, information, add information or remove information, do corrections by themselves. So we minimize the, the, the resources as far as centrally. And uh, basically we're getting ready for the application for India Age, which uh, as we follow also uh, with, the, with the responsible ministry 
uh, we expect to be within the mid-2020. Uh, some, some important thing I have to say is that every big or any, 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 any organization that is willing to participate uh, in this EDH initiative and this tendering process that will be in each country, it's very important to follow uh, the, the, the ministry who is responsible on uh, digital innovation hubs. In our case, we had one year that we had no reply from the government. Basically, uh, in 2019, uh, there was a decision, early 2018, there was a decision to create a, a completely new structure of innovation. So all the responsibilities for digital policy has moved to a different ministry. And at the moment, there is a new structure for innovation decisions in the country. Uh, it took us one year with no actually activity from the whole government. Um, but at this moment, they are engaged and we are actually working with them. And this is very important in order to be able uh, for the government also to understand the importance of having a digital innovation hub uh, in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paniatis. That was really interesting. And I think those points you ended with, um, there will be some questions and answers on that. How, which ministries are responsible in the different member states? Some countries are very advanced in this. Some will be really happy to have a knock on the door from the BICs proposing themselves as uh, potential conveners of the consortia that could deliver the digital innovation hubs. So thank you so much, Paniatis, for that very useful presentation. For, for those listening in on this webinar, we will share the slides with you as PDFs after the, the webinar. And um, we'll hand over now to Bartosz for the presentation to DIH, or not to DIH, the Krakow Technology Park experience. And then we hope to have solved the technical issue so that Anne-Marie Sasson, who is following us very well and listening very well to the webinar, can also, um, we need to figure out how to activate her sound. So uh, we hope that will be sorted after Bartosz's presentation is finished so we can hear from her about the European Commission's plans um, before we open up for questions and answers. Bartosz, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm representing Krakow Technology Park. We are uh, a small slash medium-sized um, um, technology park from southern Poland with more than 20 years uh, of experience in supporting innovative businesses. Um, you will have a, a PDF after my presentation, so this is the slide where you can check what we are doing and what verticals we are interested in. Maybe, um, maybe you will consider Krakow Technology Park as an interesting partner for your future future projects. Um, but moving to the to the point, uh, we went through many waves and uh, phases in the business support uh, policies. Uh, we started as a special eco economic zone. We went through clusters, incubator, uh, investment fund, living lab, and so on. Some of those tools uh, stayed with us and were crucial to how we understand our role in the ecosystem. Some didn't, some just uh, uh, faded away. Um, and we had a question like if really th those hubs are the future of uh, how our business should be uh, operating. Um, and making the answer short, yes, I believe uh, uh, DIH is, uh, uh, is a new interesting approach that we should all follow. Um, of course, the reasoning behind is always how to help businesses to grow faster. This is our mission and the goal. But as always, uh, in such cases, all those uh, pivots we do are also um, done because of like um, more, let's say, elaborate reasoning. First of all, we're trying to follow trends, following the best, looking what other countries are doing. We do fair share of our own experimenting. We follow a lot of results of uh, research done regionally and in, in the country, looking what's missing, what's needed. Uh, and but last but not least, we have to honestly say that we are also kind of opportunistic about that. So we look where the funding is going. Um, and I think that uh, we shouldn't uh, never miss also this reason. And as I said, DIH sounds that fulfills all the requirements I've showed here when we do um, some decisions about the, the, the direction of our technology park. Uh, I think that everybody's seen this uh, the image from TNO, uh, from Netherlands, showing the, the hub. Um, 
I believe that it's really a new way of supporting businesses. It's not just another tool. So at this moment, we kind of established a team inside our, uh, inside our technology park that's organizing the deep. But I believe that at some point it will uh, mean also some sort of transformation of the whole organization. Uh, so th this is kind of the road leading to, to becoming a DIG uh, as, a, as a whole organization. Uh, I believe that these are here to stay. The commission showed a lot of uh, resilience and commitment to this idea. Um, uh, and, and, and what are the changes um, that I see that, that kind of change the way we do uh, uh, our business support is that uh, hubs are forcing cooperation and consortiums. So um, when we've heard definition of hub for the first time, we felt that we almost do everything that is over there. So kind of we are already a hub. We don't have to change a lot. But what's uh, what's crucial is that uh, hub needs to be a big ecosystem. That's not just the environment. It's really cooperating um, consortium and uh, we feel that our role is to be an orchestrator, so it being in the middle of it uh, and making it living. Um, I will talk it about uh, talk about it later, but I think that it, it also uh, pushes a big challenge for competence centers and RTOs um, that were strong players um, regionally, uh, but now in this uh, new idea of hub, they can have some difficulty to find themselves. Uh, and now I wanted to say just how we, we what was the, our role to, to becoming a hub. We started with uh, Accelerator, a um, very particular one, connecting um, grown-up companies, manufacturers, and our uh, startup ecosystem. And we kind of uh, got encouraged by both sides um, that there is a value in our work that uh, our expertise in business modeling and understanding innovation and our um, way of doing those projects is added value to manufacturers, grown-up grown companies. So it kind of encouraged us to do more. And then we felt we, we've seen some notions about hubs and new that like um, the, the name started to show up in Interact. We were doing definitely some uh, institutions that are more up to date with Brussels started using the term. Uh, and our first um, uh, first conscious effort to create a hub was, uh, as in the case of Cyprus, in the Smart Factories project. Um, I don't think that it put us so much forward as it was just the first conscious decision that we are building the hub. We, we joined the project Horizon 2020 that it's kind of um, also valuable for us and cooperation uh, between uh, like cross-border cross cooperation. Uh, but what was crucial is uh, our governmental project. Uh, our government last year had uh, have chosen five um, um, hubs that got some uh, uh, funding to start operations and, uh, to determine also the uh, standard of how services should be provided. Uh, we have the task to create some sort of business model, uh, not just a concept, but checked business model verified in, on the market. So, so this first um, tender and uh, open call for hubs in Poland is already uh, closed. Uh, we are all operating and kind of uh, looking for proper models. Um, if we will have time, I, I'm ready to tell more about it in the Q&A session. Uh, why I think that uh, BICs are um, the best candidates to be an orchestrator uh, of the hub? I think that RTOs, um, so research and technical uh, uh, organizations, uh, uh, focus on technology transfer and technology absorption. Um, but hubs should be about transformation of the business. So not only about new production line, new product, buying new solution, but also how the organization is, uh, is operating, uh, how the decisions are made, uh, how people are trained. Is this organization prepared to continuous growth and to continuous change? towards new technologies, let's say smart factory or uh, how you want to name it, this, this phenomenon, or, or, or this is just a one, one time in, uh, investment. Uh, so the transformation is crucial from my perspective, not technology transfer. 
And the second thing is that DIC is a marketplace. It's kind of forced that hub should be a marketplace. And that means the orchestrator, I think, cannot be main solution provider because it will be definitely difficult to, uh, at one point, uh, play the game with all those uh, participants of your hub and still have the biggest um, the biggest interest in selling your own solution. So, so orchestrator should be this added business value, not the technical one. Uh, this is just my opinion. It is also um, to discussion. Um, and, and, and I think that this is very challenging. Um, so we have questions. I, I just wanted to share share them with you. Um, we still uh, try to figure out uh, how the internal uh, competition management will look like. Um, mainly we will have, let's say, ABB and Kukup, two producers of uh, robotics. Uh, how we will manage the, uh, the, the competition or also um, how we will manage the money flow inside of the consortium. Um, everybody's also asking about sustainability. I don't like this, this word. I, I just like simple questions like uh, who, for what, and how much will pay. So what will be the proper service, added value of, oper of orchestrator, of the hub, and of the uh, hub members? Um, I think that this is not obvious and we have to uh, kind of learn by doing. Um, I think that also the interesting question is how much of a technical competence is enough? And uh, I've asked this on purpose. So I believe that uh, uh, Hub or BIC should have a, a lot of this tacit knowledge about how the business should be scaled, uh, developed business models, strategy making, uh, but not necessarily a lot of technical knowledge. Technical knowledge is uh, expensive and it's kind of uh, easy to buy on the market, I would say. It's um, often it's uh, very fastly outdated. So uh, investing in your own competence sometimes is, um, let's say, uh, not reasonable. It's better to uh, let specialized institutions specialize in their technical competence and you just follow them when, when you need. So I think that DIG should be rather organization that has the very wide broad expertise but shallow and it's it's focuses on this transformation business uh, management of the change uh, uh, in the organizations uh, in smes um, and the last big question that we still would try to answer in poland is who will create standards requirements that will make you a hub or not this uh, let's say accreditation form or something like that i think that it's interesting how ebn created the benchmarking and accreditation that we were proud of for many years uh, as a big uh, and i think that it's interesting to see how the things around hubs will develop is, is it going to be a, a country a standards or um, pan-european standards and who will create those standards and so on and so on um, i have not much time so my last slide is kind of unpopular opinion to to um, spark the discussion um, because everybody is talking about the sustainability of hubs. Uh, so I have a question. If hub is able to work 100% commercially, um, then aren't we really falling into one of those two risks I'm describing on the slide? The first is that the, there might be the case that there was no initial gap in the market. There was no inefficiency in the economy. Thus, the public intervention was not in place. I think that as we all agree that there's needed the public intervention and the European Commission agrees that there's needed intervention, we kind of also agree that there is a gap on the market. The market is not fulfilling um, those needs um, uh, normally commercially. The other scenario is that if the DIG is able to work 100% commercially, that maybe it's not delivering less, uh, that, that is delivering less value that we expected from them. I, I know few technology parks in Europe that kind of mutated into just simple office rental space that I would not like to see for hubs. Um, uh, so, so basically closing this slide and, and my presentation, I would say that thinking about the sustainability uh, and the need of existing hubs in Europe, I would say that public, fin public fin uh, uh, financing is kind of needed 
if we really understand and assume that there is a gap in the market and some, some sort of inefficiency that we want to target. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm waiting for Q&A session if anyone wants to uh, follow the discussion. Thank you so much, Bartosz, again. A very insightful presentation from the perspective of EU BICS and EBN associate members. You mentioned there the role that Krakow Technology Park is able to play as an orchestrator convening the different organizations who can collectively provide the um, Digital Innovation Hub services and the balancing between technical competence and the capacity to, to grow. So really, thanks so much for, for those insights from Krakow. Now we hope, Anne-Marie, the floor is yours. Uh, we, Anne-Marie is going to join us by phone here, so we'll just pick up now, put her in speaker. Hello, Anne-Marie. Hello. So great, Anne-Marie. Marta is trying to connect you by the um, speaker and she will bring your slides. Marta, can you put the sound up on the phone, please? Anne-Marie, I think we hear you really well now. Okay, very well. Um, so, thanks a lot for all the previous uh, presentations. Uh, I've just listened on the phone, so I could not see the slides, but I think they were really interesting and they're really uh, very good examples and show what uh, the EU BICS can do for the Digital Innovation Hub. And I think you really got the point on differences between um, clusters, technology parks, RTOs. So, so all these can indeed play uh, a role in the European Digital Innovation Hub. But still, the hub should do something else, which is uh, help the local economy with the digital transformation. But I have only 10 minutes, so I go uh, quickly through my slides. I go now to slide number two, where I want to tell you about a Digital Europe program. Digital Europe program, it will start in 2021, and it will invest in digital capacities, because Europe needs more digital capacities for their digital transformation. And what are these digital capacities? For instance, uh, supercomputers, we need more supercomputers so that we can do also advanced simulations, we can do better science, we can do then many things better. We also need more capacities for artificial intelligence. Um, for instance, there we would need uh, advanced test sites like hospitals or factories or farms where companies can go and test the innovations that they are making in really real settings. We need more capacities in cybersecurity. And for instance, there what Digital Europe program wants to support is a program to audit, to, to make it possible for SMEs to have audits for the new products and uh, services that they are developing. So it's really a program improving the capacity in digital and um, the digital innovation hubs will be also supported in that. And when you get a grant of Digital Europe program, it would mean that as a digital innovation hub, you can invest that in software and hardware and also in people to deliver services to your local economy. So it has been uh, already agreed with the parliament and member states, but the only thing that still needs to be decided is the budget. That's of course very important. But we don't expect this budget to be agreed before the end of the year. Uh, the last link on this slide shows a background document that we have developed, which explains everything which I will tell you now and even more. So if we go to the next slide, um, then this is a definition of what a European Digital Innovation Hub is. And well, I think from the previous presentations, you, you have some idea of, of what it could be. So I want to go quickly over this. But we expect really that the Digital Innovation Hub, that they are based on the strengths in a region. So on, based on uh, structures and, and programs that have already been uh, done before and that work well. And that could, for instance, be the big. So the typical participants that we see are RTOs research and technology organizations and technical universities. 
for the technical side. And then we see that they should team up with um, organizations that are better from the business side. And that are, for instance, industry associations, clusters, innovation agencies, incubators, and because they already have developed those innovation services. The idea is then that these work together to form a complete digital innovation hub. We will, uh, in Digital Europe program, we want to fund around 200 digital innovation hubs spread all over Europe, but we want that uh, the member states or the regions and the European Union invest together. So we expect minimum a 50% co-investment from the member states and the regions. And they can use uh, European regional development funds for this 50% co-funding, and they can give a contribution in kind or in cash, what, what they prefer. I go to the next slide, which is called a two-step selection process. So since we are investing together with the member states in these digital innovation hubs, we will also select them together. And the first step of the selection process is that member states, they will designate a list of their possible digital innovation hubs. And uh, they will do that before a certain deadline, and that will be, well, at the moment we foresee during the summer of 2020, we would like to have this list of the member states so that we, in the autumn of 2020, we can launch a restricted call to all the designated digital innovation hubs. And then uh, they have to develop a proposal. This proposal will be evaluated by the Commission with the support of external experts so that we can really uh, determine the quality of all the proposals. Every grant that we will select must pass the threshold of the quality. And then we will uh, take the best ones from uh, all the all the ones that are uh, designated by the member states. We want them to build a balanced network, and that means that we want uh, coverage of all the regions. Uh, so the 200, they should be spread all over Europe. And we also want a certain technology coverage and sector coverage, so that we are sure that the whole network covers all the needs that the European industry has in terms of its uh, digital transformation. The next slide, uh, that's the slide called uh, Knowledge Transfer in Digital Europe Program. I think this is a very important one, where uh, also the question from the previous speaker about how much knowledge does a digital innovation hub need to have, you know, what, what is specialization? Um, I think, indeed, they can be, they don't need to have already a very specialized uh, knowledge, but while they are uh, working, they will build up more and more uh, their specialization because it will not be possible that every digital innovation hub can solve all the digital transformation problems. So, in principle, every hub chooses its own specialization, which is based on strengths that are existing and also based on the needs that the local industry has, that has the specialization, and another hub will be specialized in something else could be slightly overlapping, but still, it will also have uh, specialization. Mm -hmm. But in Digital Europe program, we also have all the digital capacities that are built up in the different pillars. So on high-performance computing, there will be uh, advanced high-performance computers that are uh, available. And it will be the task of the digital innovation hubs to help the local economy to make use of these digital capacities. The same for artificial intelligence, the same for cybersecurity and trust and the advanced digital skills. So you see here on this picture that on the one hand we have all these capacities uh, in, in the different areas. On the lower end we have the public administrations and the SMEs and mid-caps who should use these capacities. And then we have the European Digital Innovation Hub in the middle who should diffuse the capacity to the local economy. But of course, that also means that the European Digital Innovation Hub has to know what is available. And for that, we want to set up a program, train the trainer, where all the digital innovation hubs can participate. And then the specialists from the different uh, pillars, they will train the hubs 
how they can make use of artificial intelligence, how they can make use of the audit program in cybersecurity, for instance. So during the running of the Digital Innovation Hub, there will also be enough knowledge transfer from the other projects to the hubs, which then they can use again to refine their offer for the local economy. The other way around is also very important because the hubs will be working with the SMEs uh, and the public administration, so they will also see what is not working so well or what could be improved. So they also have to bring back the feedback from all the use of these facilities to the specialists so that they can improve that further. And then another uh, transfer of expertise is between the digital innovation apps, because some are already more mature and they can help the ones that are just starting. Uh, other hubs, they see how another hub is doing something and they can replicate that in their own area. So there will also be a lot of transfer of expertise between the European Digital Innovation Hub. And of course, there will then also be the effect of the, of the specialization. Uh, if uh, one hub in one region cannot help a certain company because they don't have that specialization, then it's the idea that another hub who would be specialized in that could help that hub. That help that company. So this will also lead to uh, to transfer of expertise, but also to new value chains in Europe, where where SMEs, because it's not only the hub, it's also the whole ecosystem, where there are maybe already some good suppliers or startups that also have this expertise, who could help them SMEs in other parts of Europe. Uh, they can work together. They can form new value chains. So this will also be very important to stimulate the, the European economy and then especially the SMEs. I now go to the to the uh, last slide. So here this summarizes a little bit what I said in the in the last picture. We will really have European added value of this networking of the hub and of the fact that these hubs are funded by Digital Europe program where the hubs themselves, they can export and import their excellence, the specialization that they have, and this will lead to new European value chains, but also on the capacity building for the Digital Innovation Hub, there will be a lot of exchange of experience, good practice, the possibility for mirroring successful setups, more mature hubs can help less mature ones, and then you can learn from the specialists in HTC cybersecurity, AI, the advanced training and all the possibilities which are in Digital Europe program through the train the trainer approach. You can not only learn from them, but you can also make use of all the solutions that are developed because these are developed for the whole economy in Europe and they should also be used by everyone in Europe. So the next steps are that, uh, that we still need to decide on the budget. We expect that only um, when Germany is the presidency, so that will be in the second half of 2020. Nevertheless, we still need to continue with our preparations because otherwise there will be no time. And when in 2021 we will start giving, you know, the funding to the projects that we have selected, if then we still need to start with the whole selection process, we can only fund them in 2022. So we continue our work with the member states and our next uh, working level meeting with the member states will be on the 10th of February, where we will try to finalize this uh, document with, in which you can find the link on this page so that we have a fully clear picture together with the member states how we are going to select the European Digital Innovation Hub. We also want to set up a communication campaign in all member states. So for that, we want the member states to take the lead that they, in, in their country, they organize an event where they invite all the stakeholders and, uh, and then we can discuss first the, select, the national selection process and then the European selection process. So we expect that by the summer, so August 2020, the member states should designate their European Digital Innovation Hub to us and then the European Commission will open a restricted call in the second half of uh, 2020. So thank you for your attention. This is what I wanted to tell you. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Thank you for bearing with us with the technical problems.
this is um actually i think it worked very well to hear from you at the end in terms of the next steps and the importance um of the message for eu bics and ebn associate members to take away you're already providing a lot of the business support services that european digital innovation hubs will your ideal partners so please connect locally to get engaged if you do want to get involved and consider becoming formally involved if you're not already now is the time to flag this to the competent authorities in your country if you're struggling to identify who this is please contact the ebn team to so we can um try and help you figure it out and um, please keep in touch share with us your experiences also um, you say that's really important you have to act now nationally to be in consideration to be able to tap into the what's happening at european level from 2021 also for your companies the client companies there's many funding and experimentation opportunities currently open for smes we've included in this slide a link where you can find them all we give you one example, Smarties is a digital innovation hub network focused on the uptake of flexible and wearable electronics. And um, so or EBN is involved in this and we're already financing several companies from EU BICS. They're receiving a blend of the Cascade funding and the um, mentoring from EU BICS, the types of support that we've discussed that European digital innovation hubs will be providing. There's also coming up the opportunity to get involved as Smart Agri hubs and um, to be launched in the first half of this year um so they're just some of the opportunities to come up with but we really encourage you to check the link where we've included in this slide where we say explore them here several interesting cascade opportunities for you now we're going to hand over to questions um and hope we hope some answers and um, please if you've any questions you write them in the in the chat and um, the first one's that we can see are from Javier. So Javier Achari, CEO of EBN, who most of you know, we'll hand over to you right away. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And um, well, first of all, thank you for all the three guest speakers today for having been very concise with your messages and with your explanations. That uh, certainly clarifies a little bit what uh, we are facing, uh, the, the current situation and uh, the elements that are to be considered as uh, important for going forward. Now, I do have questions for all the three, but Anne-Marie, you would allow me to, um, to, to, to come to you first um, with the questions. Um, the first question that comes to my mind is, is double. We have gone through some EU initiatives, as uh, Margaret very well pointed out, uh, whether it was on smart uh, agri hubs or whether it was on the uh, flexible electronics, for example, all directed towards digital innovation apps. There was somehow a lack of definition at that period. And there's been an enormous amount of confusion among our members and in the marketplace about what is this thing, digital innovation apps. I think you have given a very clear answer to that already. But who is in charge of selecting the shortlist of uh, potential digital innovation apps at the country level? I understood today from you that from that shortlist, you're going to be doing that restricted call and you're going to be selecting 200 digital innovation hubs. That's fantastic. At least we got some clarity. Where we're still uh, fighting is to, to try to understand at the level of each country or region, who is in charge? Who's in charge of this at the ministerial level? Who is in charge of this at the regional level? And I just came back from France last week and we had a debate on digital innovation hubs among our French members, and there was an enormous amount of confusion. Can you give us some hints about this? Yes, uh, thank you very much for your question. And I also understand uh, all the confusion, and uh, I am uh, sorry for that. But in every country, it will be done differently. So we are talking with the ministries of economy, usually. Um, we are inviting them to the to the meetings. So for France, we we talk with uh, I think it's DGE. <laughs> um, David Serva is uh, our contact person who is who is best uh, you know who follows uh, the things. And then we expect that France will then coordinate with their regions how to do that. So. France should 
develop a national strategy on, on how to select the digital innovation hubs. And I know that uh, in December, uh, David Servaz said that they were working on it, but they don't have it totally clear yet how, how to do that. So I also don't know how it will work in France, but I know that on the meeting that we are, will be having uh, on the 10th of uh, February, we will invite all the member states to explain how they think they are going to do the selection in, the, in their country. So I, I really understand the confusion. Um, we, uh, this is also a new process, you know, we've never done something like this before. So for us it was difficult, but for all the countries it's also difficult. And um, we hope that soon there will be uh, more clarity, that all the member states will decide how they will do their selection. And that then they will also organize a meeting in their country and invite all the relevant actors and then provide this clarity that is needed. So I, I hope it will all come soon. <laughs> we, we, we all hope so as well. I think one of the main concerns in the network is um, we hear different organizations positioning themselves. They're getting information, but nobody knows where from. And uh, so what is very, very important for the network is to get clarity about who is the contact point in each of the countries, who is going to be the decision maker for the shortlist. I understand that you at the Commission are going to be the final ones making a decision about the 200 uh, digital yeah. innovation hubs. We obviously hope that at least 199 of those are going to be EVN members, as you can expect. Uh, but uh, and in any case, we are very committed to making sure that we can contribute to your initiative, which we find that goes exactly in the same direction as what an EU bit means and the uh, requirements that we oblige our members to consider, particularly the regional development, the specialization and the mobilization of the resources existing in the region. So I think we are very, very well aligned and we want to support, but uh, we definitely need to keep this uh, conversation open. And uh, we'll certainly come back with the subject at the Congress uh, in June this year in Brussels. So expect another invitation from us now to be able to, uh, to 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 brief us where we are, I think that every time we have invited you, you get a lot. We get a lot more clarity on how things are going. So we thank you very much for that. Okay. So sorry. I think it was a very good suggestion that you said that you would like to know who is the contact point in each country. And I've noted that down, and I will ask that to the when we have the meeting on the tenth. I will ask each country if they can give a contact point. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, Margaret, I've got more questions. Uh, you want me to uh, then uh, go back to Bartosz and to uh, Panayotis? I, we have time for one question for each, and then I think we really need to wrap up so that we can liberate people. Um, we promised a 45 minute webinar, we can go to 55 minutes and then we'll, we'll cut and we will continue the conversations offline. And if anybody, as we say, we'll share the slides with everybody who participated in this webinar and we'll remain available for questions. Bartosz, Paniotis and Anne-Marie have all included their email addresses in it, but you can channel any questions via us as well. We'll keep everything coordinated. Okay? And, we'll, so, and we'll try to come back to you with all the responses we get, all the information uh, across the membership so that you get a, a much better picture. Uh, very, very quickly then, um, Panayotis, uh, question one. Uh, I've got plenty of others, but I'll restrict to one. You mentioned the, 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 the way you came about uh, becoming a digital innovation hub uh, in Cyprus, uh, and you mentioned something that was important. How do you build the perfect typology of different consortia partners so that you can propose yourself to a digital innovation hub? How, how did you come up with the mix that made it so compelling? for the Cyprus government to grant a digital innovation have a uh, consideration to you. And Bartosz, I'm jumping on the second question so you guys can, can use uh, the time very efficiently. There was one thing you said that triggered me to think. You mentioned that the role of a digital innovation hub is more of an orchestrator rather than a technical specialist. So more business, more an orchestrator capacity rather than the technical skills. Can you explain a little bit further on that and eventually, and Marie may want to chip on that comment and maybe give her views as well. Well, thank you both. 
Yes. Uh, hi, Javier. Yes, as far as your question, um, I think we we started basically from the main RTOs and organizations that they provide the digital innovation services at the moment. So our focus is to the ones that they already provide services. So for instance, when we did our business plan, when we were doing this training from PwC, we, we spoke with all the RTOs and universities and we identified those that they were already providing services to the industry, uh, not a lot of course. And also we, we spotted the ones that they were willing to provide services. Uh, so at the moment, what we are do, trying to do is to isolate the areas of specialization uh, because the, although primarily we said that it's gonna be like a national, mainly be, because as an organization, as SARIC, we are indeed orchestrators. And this is very important actually, because if we were not, let's say, in the real ecosystem and knowing everybody, uh, it's very difficult to orchestrate all these organizations. Um, so this is this is this is very important. But uh, coming back to the initial question, is that we look at the expertise of the RTOs that are really interested and willing to provide a number of services. Uh, this, this is the most important. Uh, of course, we didn't touch a lot actually the companies that provide such services that come from the associations. Uh, so we work more with the RTOs that have a lot of infrastructure towards innovation, while uh, we do know that as far as the digital transformation, there is more to be offered also from other entities that come from the, from the industry. So we're trying to focus ourselves on, on two, three, three specific sectors and, and trying to group, let's say, the dynamics uh, of the ecosystem uh, and where we are really strong because we cannot definitely do everything. We're a very small and isolated island with limited resources, specific research organizations, specific uh, innovation organizations that they, they provide specific services. So we have to really group the main areas and focus on those. I don't know if I'm answering the question completely, Javier, on what yeah, you had in yeah. mind. De definitely. Thank you very much, Panayotis. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Javier, for your question. Um, uh, just uh, uh, maybe elaborating on what I have met, meant by saying that we should be more an orchestrator than the technical expert. Um, I believe that, the, let's say, uh, to make it simple, the old way of doing things is that, uh, the, let's say, manufacturer came to your organization and asked about, the, um, let's say, they want to robotization of part of the manufacturing process. So you just uh, talked about them um, uh, on uh, requirements and then uh, propose an offer, um, uh, the technical offer, and they said if they have a budget or not. Uh, I believe that the role of hub is to take a client like that and ask many, many more questions about the business strategy. Have they thought about the business model, unit economy of their product? Have they thought about training their personnel? Have they thought about um, uh, how they will collect the data if the organization is data-driven or still intuition-driven? Um, so the hub should be more on the business side, understanding if this organization is going through uh, transformation or, or it's just buying new stuff. Um, and then knowing that after, let's say, some sort of audit, uh, we may say that we believe that uh, uh, you need, okay, you need a robotization of this part of your organization, but we also believe that you need to invest right now in the software that will help you make some decisions or predictive maintenance or something like that, or you need to invest in a communication infrastructure at your company because it holds down your potential and we will suggest the roadmap and the whole roadmap for the whole organization not only focusing on one implementation one small uh, uh, let's say project um, that's why uh, the hub the orchestration of the hub should at some point let's say do some sort of scoring of the client understanding the client and then based on that deciding 
who is a, a proper provider, solution provider for this client. Uh, so this is the marketplace where we have a demand, we generate demand from the market, and then we choose, uh, let's say, we want to have so, uh, solution providers that kind of uh, compete a little bit inside of the hub. We will evaluate every time uh, the, the service that was provided uh, just to make sure that we are really a one-stop shop, that we are a place where you take care of your client, not just sell them new stuff. Um, so so th this is what I meant, that uh, we should more focus on business strategy uh, side rather than only technical issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bartek. Yeah, thank you, Bartosz. Thank you, Bartosz. Thank you, Paniotis. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Fascinating takeaway there. As we said, for everyone who's participated in this webinar, we will share the slides afterwards. You'll also receive in the next 24 hours a follow-up survey, which we would ask you to please take five, three minutes, I think, to complete, so we know if the, how much value this has been for you. Also for EBN members for on this call and your client companies, and also Anne-Marie, if there's any um, but you would like to promote it too. I take the chance to remind you about the next webinar we have coming up. It's on the 6th of February from 4 to 5 CET. So an hour later than this one on a Thursday afternoon. And it's about the regional attractiveness webinar, which has been run in partnership with Dublin Business and Innovation Centre, about the opportunities to internationalise into Ireland through the EU BIC network. So you haven't been aware of it please check our website sign up for that and we look forward to connecting again online thanks everyone bye bye, -bye. thank you bye bye